So this is how I'm spending my second night back on the road, covered in ticks, taking a pathetic sink shower to try to wash them out while burning dinner just hours before someone trying to break into my van. How did we get here? Let's rewind a bit. About six months ago, after two years of full-time traveling, I committed to a relatively serious surgery on my shoulder, which meant going back home and recovering in my hometown in Iowa. While going through recovery, I started a couple of van projects, which snowballed into some massive modifications to my electrical and plumbing systems, from adding a water heater to tripling my power capacity, but those topics are for a future video. So after months of recovery and van projects, my shoulder, the van, and I are very much ready to hit the road, but not quite yet. Anxious and excited about the journey to come today, I still have to finish my final steps of cleaning my water tank. About 24 hours ago, I put bleach in my tank, and while waiting for that tank to drain, I finished packing up and organizing for the road trip heading west. After everything had been loaded into the van and the tank of bleach water had been emptied, the last thing to do was fill the water tank with fresh water, and then hit the road a whole quarter mile down the road to fill up the fuel tank with some fuel. And once the van was full of gas, we made our way out of town, stopping at the Overlook to take one more look at the river and get a couple pictures of the van before we head all the way west. But we have to take the opportunity to look at the flooded Mississippi one more time before we hit the road heading all the way west. The river has been steadily rising for the past couple weeks of getting the van ready, and it's been pretty crazy watching the water level rise so high that local businesses and buildings are starting to slightly go underwater. So a couple more pictures and then we're off for our travels. The largest reason that most people choose to live in a camper is to be able to travel, and while I'm excited to put some miles on, more than anything, I'm just looking forward to being landed in Colorado. Traveling is really fun, but it also can be really hectic and expensive, especially with this being the first road trip in a long time. Cassie the dog was pretty nervous. We made it about two hours down the road before pulling over for our first break. Cassie was pretty anxious, so I just wanted to let her out and let her chill for a little bit. And along with that, the van is overdue for an oil change. So I found a Walmart that had big enough doors to fit the Ford Transit in. Turns out it can be tough to find a garage that has tall enough doors to fit a high roof Ford Transit in it, especially with the solar panels on top. The good news is the van is going to fit inside the shop. The bad news is it's going to be like two hours until the van can get in for an oil change. So... We're relaxing. It was very well needed. Cassie's been anxious as hell this entire drive, so it was good to be able to let her actually calm down for a minute. So we're just relaxing until a bay opens up, and once a bay opens up, I think Cassie and I are going to look to see if there's anything to do around here. We're going to go on a little walk, let her burn some energy, and then um, hopefully there's like a dog store around. We're in like a really nice like shopping center, so I kind of assume that there's like a Petco or something around here. I'd really like to be able to take Cassie in there and have her do something that's fun. So, that's the plan. I took Cassie to go to the doggy mall. We walked around Petco, and I also got myself some Mexican food for the road. Just got the van back after getting the oil changed. Went and got a bite to eat for me, and we went to the Petco. Got her a doggy treat while we were there. I did find one drawer unlocked that I left locked in the van, and there was some boot prints in the back of the van, like the guys were messing around inside the van. Kind of weird. There's no reason to come back in the living space for any reason at all doing an oil change. I don't see anything missing and I don't care. They're probably just checking it out. I do have the dash cam plugged in. It looks like maybe it was recording the whole time. So hopefully I can get that footage and put it in right now. There might be some really funny responses about the racing sim being in the passenger seat. Uh, but I'm gonna eat this burrito and then we're gonna hit the road. It's always fun eating at Mexican restaurants as I travel. Mexican food can vary so much from restaurant to restaurant and especially state to state. I was trying to wait to get some Santiago's in Sterling, Colorado, but I caved when I saw this place near the Petco. Eating this mid-Iowa burrito not only has me more excited for Colorado for the burrito, but also this has me thinking about camping in the mountains and how much I can't wait to have a good view. But first I need to get some more gas. This is the second fuel up of the trip, and after that we're meeting it for the long haul with a full belly, full tank of gas, fresh oil, and a happy dog. 6181, so we're about 100 bucks so far. We're not even out of Iowa. Goddamn. steady cruising for a while but Cassie was starting to get a little dancy like she might need to go to the bathroom and it was right around six o'clock so I figured it was a good time to pull over hit a rest stop stretch our legs and let the dog have her supper before taking off trying to make our way all the way to Colorado by the end of the day 
Cassie ate her dinner, we both hit the bathroom, and then we hit the road with intentions of making it to Colorado. Nebraska seems to drag on forever and ever when you're driving through that state lengthwise. And after waking up early that morning and getting everything finished up on the van before hitting the road, I was getting tired and the sun was starting to set. I saw a camping spot on I Overlander that was just barely off the highway and it looked like it was really near a cool pond with some trails all around it. After a full day of driving through the flatlands from Iowa into Nebraska, we were both ready to pull over and call the night. I wanted to eat my leftover Mexican food and Cassie still hasn't eaten and it was like 7 p.m. and she had been getting pretty antsy about getting supper fed. So it seemed like it was gonna be a good idea to stop for the night and take a rest. Stay, Cassie, stay. Come here, let's turn the lights on. All right, go buddy. I swear I just saw a set of eyes over there. I swear I just saw a reflection. Oh man. Okay. We're not gonna get spooked. We're not gonna get spooked. We just got landed at our spot for the night. It was a little spot that I found on iOverlander. Cassie's a little bit nervous since I got some food out and it's our first night on the road. I was really hoping to make it into Colorado, but we came up pretty short. I think on like two and a half hours or something, probably about two hours from the border, two and a half hours from where I was trying to get to. Cassie's been a great dog the entire drive. Isn't that right, Cassie? She was really nervous when we started the trip, but I'm just gonna eat a little bit of my leftovers before we go to bed here. It's just the second half of the burrito that I had while we were getting an oil change at Walmart today. can still just barely hear the highway noise. I bet once I'm laying in bed, I'll be able to hear it, but it's almost like white noise when you're far enough away from highways. That kind of helps me fall asleep. We just woke up. Cassie the dog is in a major hurry to get outside this morning, but the spot's pretty freaking cool. So originally the plan was to wake up and get right back on the road, hightailed out of Nebraska and get our way into colorful Colorado. But for some reason I just didn't feel like it. After spending weeks getting the van road trip ready and then spending a day from 4 a.m. all the way until about 10 p.m. working on the van and then driving the van all day, I was just feeling like it would be a good idea to take a buffer day since we had a good parking spot with a nice walking trail around it, bathrooms weren't too far away. It made sense just to park for one day and hang out in this awesome spot in Nebraska, right? I was behind on live streaming, so I put in a good few hours playing the racing simulator on live, and then we just had a really chill evening walking around by the lake, hanging out down at the beach, and then we came back to make some supper. And when I got back to make supper, I found a tick on me. And when I looked closer, I found another tick on me, and another. And I pulled about five off of me before it hit me. How many are on Cassie? So as I was looking Cassie over for more ticks, I realized that the french fries were still in the oven and I absolutely fried them. So it was just really seeming like one of those days. So Cassie gets a waterless bath, just spraying her over with the anti-tick and flea spray that I have. And then I get a nice sink shower. And for some reason, I didn't use my brand new water heater. It was just all a little too much to take in. So I took a cold shower and that really was a nice humbling moment. Second day back on the road and just covered in ticks. I jinxed myself earlier that day talking to another van liver, Tori Delury, saying something along the lines of, you know, maybe Nebraska isn't so bad. And that came around to bite me in the ass so much harder than I could ever thought. Just when I thought my night couldn't get any worse, I decided to try to go to sleep with a tick-filled bed. And as I'm rolling around in the bed bugs trying to fall asleep, I finally start to doze off and I hear something strange behind the van. What's going on, bud? 
So I just woke up to the noise of something rutting around outside the van. I don't know if it was somebody fucking with the back door handle or if it was just somebody bumping against the van. But we are parked somewhere that there should be no one near the van. And then I heard a loud belch. I got up and grabbed my safety device and I haven't heard anything since. And that's when I realized somebody's trying to break into the van. I can hear somebody tugging on the door handle and I am out in the middle of nowhere. And by this point in the day, I'm just irritated that my night's sleep is now going to be completely ruined, not only by the bed bugs and ticks, but by some Jimmy trying to break into the van. Normal person probably would have got up and drove to a new parking spot at that time, but I just truly had not one fuck left to give. So we tried to go back to sleep. I cannot sleep. Cassie's being antsy. I swear to God, there's bugs in the bed. I feel like they're everywhere. It's crazy. The dog's gonna act like she needs to go outside to go to the bathroom, but we can't go out there because there's fucking ticks everywhere. Come on, Cass. Good girl, it's one at night. So the next morning I wake up and find more ticks on Cassie, so we go straight to the vet to get her taken care of and make sure everything is safe, because ticks can be kind of serious. Which I was bummed to spend a couple hundred bucks at the vet, but little do I know I'm going to be spending ten times that in a couple days down the road when Cassie has to stay overnight at the vet for a couple of nights. Be sure to check out her next video to see what happens there. Some cool Midwest art. The clock. What a night, man. From the ticks all over to the fucking someone. I, I gotta shave this off one sec. So I had to shave my beard. I tried to leave the mustache because I thought it looked cool. With what seems like an absolute nightmare of a second night in the van and the universe is trying to make us fail at every point that it can, me and Cassie stay positive and be happy that the van is running well and that we still have the opportunity to get on the road and head to Colorado and that's just what we do. But yeah, from getting ticks all over to then having somebody fiddle fucking with the back door and now a hundred dollar vet visit, we're off to a little bit of a rough start. I doubt anyone watched to this far, but if you did, comment dog in the comments so I know that you watched all the way to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching my first ever van life vlog video, if that's what you'll call it. Subscribe if you want to see more content from Dan and Cassie. I have a bunch of footage backlogged from the rest of our trip getting to Colorado, and then we've been in Colorado for probably about a week now. We've made a fox friend, we had a winter storm, we've had a bunch of good stuff happen, so hit the subscribe if you guys want to see more of it. I don't have an outro yet, so this is the best you got. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button and comment dog if you made it to the end of the video. Thank you guys. Peace.